In this video, I'm going to walk through the processing I did for a series of photos, infrared photos, taken at uh, the McLeod Plantation on James Island in Charleston, South Carolina. This was shot with an infrared camera converted to 590 nanometers. On the left here is the original image uh, as it looks uh, out of camera, and then on the right is the effect that we're going for. So in this edit, I'm going to focus on um, working only in Lightroom using a custom profile that I created. Um, and uh, the twist on this is that uh, we're going to use a little bit of uh, split toning to enhance the image. Okay, so let's get started. So I want to focus on um, this. This is the image we have out of camera. So the first thing we want to do is look at the white balance. Of course, this is in infrared. This is the uh, one of the main uh, creative choices that we're going to make when we look to um, edit an image, whether whether we're going to go to Photoshop and do a, a channel swap later or not. Uh, white balancing is pretty important, especially at 590 nanometers. So I've created a number of profiles. Um, um, so this is kind of a standard profile uh, that that uh, created in the in the DNG profile editor. I, I'll cover that in another video. Um, and then some variations using different uh, color temperature settings to get me some different starting points uh, in color or in black and white. So for this um, edit, I'm going to focus on this um, profile in which I used a, a negative 75 uh, temperature setting. And I'll, again, I'll cover that in a, in a separate video about the, the Adobe DNG profile editor. So we'll select that. And now the, the white balance. There's lots of options here for white balance. Um, the, in this particular image, one of the most obvious choices is this building, which is white. Um, and so that would get us um, a certain uh, sort of color. But you could also uh, white balance on the bark of the tree. Uh, which would get you another color temperature so that uh, that first that the, the building was about a 8600 Kelvin and the bark of the tree is about 25,000 Kelvin. Uh, another choice you could do is to uh, look at the foliage um, and get you somewhere in the middle. So this is about 13,000 Kelvin. So there's no there's no right answers here for white balance. This is a purely creative decision. You can do whatever you like in this space. For this particular image, because I'm not going to do a um, uh, a channel swap, a color channel swap in Lightroom, I'm gonna I'm gonna spend more time focusing on the colors that I want right here. So in this case, I'm going to go for this sort of a, kind of a split tone look with the, uh, the the green aqua foliage and some some a bit of a red sky. So I can in this case, I'm going to just tweak the uh, uh, the balance myself uh, to get it where I want it to be. So I want to get a, start to get a hint of um, of that green um, in the sky, and I'll probably do that with the tint. So. Just start to bring in a little bit there. We'll do a little bit more later. Okay, so that's a good starting point for um, for the for the for the colors that I'm looking for. Now let's uh, dive in a little bit with some of our other settings. Um, I'm gonna let's start with contrast. We'll get the contrast built up a bit, and so of course we want to do that by adding a little bit of a tone curve. So I'll pick the medium uh, uh, point curve there, and we'll add a little bit of contrast uh, to get some bring some life into the image okay now I want to address some of the what I would view as distractions um, in this image and the, and these are the really the main the lights and the darks um, you can see uh, the sky and some of the trees in the background are very bright the ground is very bright I want to I want to really back that off a bit and we're going to do that with highlights so you've got some choices here um, but in this case I'm probably just going to drag the highlights all the way down and bring the shadows all the way up, just for the kind of the, the, the flavor that I'm looking for in the image. Um, and we'll add a little bit of whites. Um, and then, of course, to try to keep some of that contrast, we'll bring, bring the blacks down a little bit. Okay. Um, uh, we'll add a little bit of texture to this image. Not too much, just a little bit. Um, some clarity to try to bring some of that pop back in. And just a, a hint of dehaze, not not too much on the dehaze. Okay, so now we're getting to the to that um, 
little bit of that separation that I want some some crispness in the in the in the midtones, but not too much, not too too strong on the highlights or the or the um, the shadows for a distraction. So now, um, well, let's deal with the crop uh, because that'll that'll help with some of this stuff. So I'm going to go in this case. I'm going to go with a four by five crop, uh, sort of your your standard Instagram crop, if you will. Um, I'm going to get rid of some of this foreground. So I want to find the trees obviously are gorgeous. I want to focus there. Uh, we'll cut a little bit of this, a uh, little bit of this foreground out. So there, that's good. So, okay. They're much better. So now let's get into the color part of this, which is really the interesting part. So I've got a couple different things that I want to do here to address the color. So first of all, I, I'm going to work in the, uh, the HSL space. And what I want to do here is I want to manipulate the the orange sky color into be something a bit of a red that I'm looking for. And so to do that, I'm going to take the uh, the hue slider, and you can either manipulate the the sliders directly, or you can grab this color picker um, and then go over and pick the color you want and start to manipulate that way. So that's what I'll do. And look across the scale, and then you can you can kind of go back and forth and see what kind of a range you want to give to that color. So in this case, I could take that sky all the way from a yellow all the way to a bit of a red color. Um, and that's what I'm going for, it, but it's a little bit strong. So I like the, the, the color, the hue itself, but the saturation is just a bit over the top. So let's go over to the saturation tab and do the same thing. I've got the, co the color picker uh, selected here, and I will just go to the screen and drag down a little bit. I uh, just want to remove some of that um, saturation. I, I like the color that it's presenting, but I, I don't want the punchiness that's coming from that super high saturation. Okay, so now that's looking really nice. Okay, so I, I like where the sky is, but I want a little bit more punch in the trees. And for that, we're going to use a different tool. Um, instead of trying to just lift it um, here, for that I'm going to go into split toning. What's really nice about split toning is that um, I can really, I can target uh, the high, uh, the, the colors uh, in the, in the, it's not targeting colors, it's targeting the, uh, either the brightness or the, uh, the, the shadow, the, the light or the dark parts of the scene. And in this case, I want to add some punch to the highlights because I think that's really going to affect uh, the, the moss that's on these trees. So a uh, couple options here, I can either uh, drag the sliders around or I can click this box open this up and then have some choices and and what's really nice here is I can I can click and I can drag around in real time so I can look at different colors and and different levels of saturation so the higher I go in this box the more saturation the lower the less saturation and then from left to right is going to get me the different colors of the spectrum so I'm looking for this um, sort of green teal look uh, that's going to happen at about 180 uh, degrees on the hue side, and we'll bring it down to about uh, maybe 25 here on the saturation. Okay, so that's that's the that's the look I'm going for. So, uh, but you've got a lot again, a lot of creative choices, and the, the, this is just another tool that you have when editing an infrared photo. So you have. Uh, you have the, the choices in profile and in white balance. Uh, you can use HSL in Lightroom to uh, start to affect colors there and move them a little bit. You can use split toning to add color. And, and this is all within Lightroom before you even go over to, say, Photoshop, where you have a whole bunch of other choices as well. So lots of options. The uh, creativity is, is really open-ended. That's one of the things that I love about infrared photography is it's really expanded my horizons when it comes to color uh, in photograph and what what's what's possible with color and it's even it's even had an impact on the the visible light sort of regular color photography that I shoot because of my my heightened awareness of what you can do with color um, okay so let's uh, finish this off by just adding some a little bit of sharpness not too much and I'm going to take the detail down and we'll mask this a bit holding down the alt key on windows just so that I can get a, a sample here of where the uh, where the sharpening is going to happen and I'm going to pretty heavily mask this as I tend to do because I don't want to overdo the sharpening okay so uh, there's the final image um, 
that we have. And in this in the, in this particular case, um, what I did with with this image is I wanted to turn it into a series because there was a whole bunch of amazing. Uh, the trees at this location were absolutely fantastic, and I wanted a, a single style that could be then applied uniformly to all of these. So this is our finished image, but if we hop over to uh, this grid view in Lightroom, just hitting G, you can see that I applied the same style to um, a whole variety of shots so that uh, they would all kind of have the same flavor and character um, as I posted them. So there you go. That is... Um, editing a 590 nanometer infrared shot using Lightroom only, a DNG profile, and a little bit of split toning. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.